What's up, YouTube? So today we are carrying on our journey exploring the Cartesian sequencer. But in this episode, we're taking it a little step further. I'm going to try to recreate something called the Make Noise Rene, which is essentially a three channel Cartesian sequencer with a couple of pretty interesting parameters. We basically have the three channels that share a note plane. So say, for example, we have a single set of notes and then three channels which can determine different positions on that plane to generate different notes. So this is cool because we can create a set of rules, for example, a, a scale to choose from, and then various different ways to sequence that same set of notes in different channels. So in this example, I have three different MIDI channels being sent out, one which is sending to an instance of Vital and the other two which are sending to instances of Faceplant. And they all share similar notes, but they're being sequenced in different ways. So I think this is a really interesting way of creating ideas that are multi-layered, that are always going to kind of be relevant to a particular musical scale. It's just interesting uh, sequencing technique nonetheless. So one thing to note about how the Rene is designed is that the X and Y channels, the first two channels, basically have a set of pre-made motions which these kind of dots can sequence through. So they have like an up and down or a snake-like motion. And the Z plane, which is the third channel, basically determines its X and Y values from the other two channels. So this is really interesting because the third channel is always going to be based on what's happening on the first two channels. So you get this really interesting interplay um, between the all layers uh, with this. And this module has always interested me in the hardware, but I always felt like it was a little bit too deep and a little bit too confusing for uh, uh, something like a hardware synth to be able to play on the fly, you know? But having something like this in software is a little bit different because it allows us to create presets and parameters and all sorts of stuff which we can quickly change, like macros and all sorts of stuff. So we're kind of using the concepts from uh, the hardware world and trying to inject some of the, uh, let's say, uh, ease of use from the software world. So basically, we're going to build on the idea which we explored in the previous video. So if you haven't watched that, I'm going to highly suggest, in fact, you have to go watch it because it's going to build on a concept from that video. In that video, we're essentially creating just one of these channels. And then from there, we're going to expand this idea. Today, I want to talk about how to create uh, some various interesting uh, modulation movements within the 2D space and how to set it to all link to send to the third channel. So what I've got here is a basic concept which is based on the stuff which I talked about in the last video. I'm actually generating the movement within the grid itself using these counter modules. Um, so there's pros and cons to doing this. The major uh, reason why I'm doing it inside the grid is so that we can use something like a merge to switch between different types of modulations. So here, for example, we've just got a basic 16 step sequencer where it steps through the steps from bottom to top and then from left to right. So we can also do various things here by just creating, for example, different phase modulations with this system. So we could say reverse the signal, create a button here, and then we can switch between these two types of modulation. You see here, now it reverses this motion. So we're going to use this concept of a merge to create various different patterns which we can step between. So I want to show you a couple of, of these pattern ideas which I've already you know, pre-thought, I've pre-baked. But just for the basics of this, the main counter, the up and down system, just the basic one, just uses this st steps, uh, just uses triggers. And then you divide the amount of steps that you want to do over here. and uh, triggers and counters like this. So essentially what it's doing is it's moving through and every time it counts to four, it then triggers the next one. So it's a pretty basic system that we've set up over here. And like I said, I wanna talk about creating some slightly more advanced modulation movement systems. So the whole idea is gonna be based around this merge, okay? What we wanna do is we wanna set this to nearest so it doesn't interpolate. And then what we can do is we can actually create a duplicate of this and pop it in over here, right? 
So now we've got a system where we can create one switch that's gonna switch both the X and the Y movements. So this is important because we want to switch them both at the same time. So now we could switch to a different type of movement, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And we can scale this up to up to eight different types of movements, okay? So here what I've done, um, what I've already uh, kind of pre-designed a couple of different types of movements. So this one I call the efficient snake. So I try to actually do this with all like different phase modulation things and eventually just came around to the idea that actually just using the steps modulation system like this is just so much simpler. Um, that's why it's called efficient snake. So just using these one, two, three, four, five modules, we're essentially creating two layers um, of snake, both X and Y. So we can put this over here and let's wire these into these different mergers. So when we switch this button, let's just put this closer to the X, Y so we can see what happens. When we switch the button, it's gonna change to the snake pattern, which snakes left to right like this. You see that? So instead of going left to right, left to right, left to right, it's left to right, right to left, left to right, right to left. So the whole idea of the system is we're gonna create a couple of these different movements and then be able to switch between them. So instead of this button, let's drag in a value over here just so we can get more increments, not just a binary on and off. So here what we can do is instead of putting the snake in here, what we want to do is we want to just put in the reverse modulations from the first patch. So for example, here, we want to wire up like this so that we have up, down, uh, down, up, left, right, and then we can switch it to the opposite way around. So we can basically quickly switch to the opposites. And now we want to scale this up to four on both sides. And we want to literally do the same with that efficient snake pattern. So we send this one here into the first one, this one into the first one, and then this one into this one's second one, and vice versa. So now what we can do is we have four different movements, which we can assign using this value. Uh, third one being snake one way around, the fourth one being snake the other way around. So that's, that's that. Uh, we can actually just start creating a little bit more space here because things are gonna get a little bit more complex. So let's go ahead and add another two channels over here and another two channels over here. Just so you can see actually how this is created, these are uh, the steps patterns, uh, the steps modules, and I've set them to interpolation so that the values just go a bit smoother on the X, Y. Um, otherwise, they, they step a little bit too much. And okay, yeah, anyway, the next animation, I'm gonna call it, that I created is called spirals. So it's a similar concept, except we're creating spirals. So this one actually has two counterparts. So what we're actually gonna do is just create a bit of space here. We have a spiral in and a spiral out. But now these all share the same transport module, you see? We don't necessarily have to use a brand new one. We can create the system based around this transport module that already exists. Or just to, to make things a little bit easier to understand when we jump in here, we could just drag this in, you know, like this, spiral in. Okay, let's see these other patterns. Snake, spirals. And then the next system, I call Pong, which just uses a sink and two mirrors to basically create some kind of Pong-like motion. So check this out. If we just put this in here and over here, set this to the last value, look how it like bounces off the edges. Because phase modulation is only ever gonna exist between zero and one, and the X and Y over here uh, display values between zero and one, um, the mirror basically creates this thing where it's always going to like bounce back. <laughs> so that's a pretty interesting animation system where we can create a pong. We can just plop this anywhere over here. 
So like this is getting pretty complicated. You can split this up so that it's a little bit easier to read. But for now, let's just leave it like this. Uh, a nice big square. We can move this over here like this. So now we have seven different animation patterns to choose from, which send to the different uh, XY modulators, right? So we can call this animation. And that's the first big step in the project. Now what we can do is we can start looking at creating the multiple channels of modulation and how we would send those different channels out to different MIDI channels. Okay, so the next step is to create the next channel over here. So what we can start doing is let's start to label things over here. Call this X, put another one over here. Let's call this Y and let's create another X, Y over here. So now all we need to do is once we've created this whole animation system, all we need to do here is select the mergers and modulators, hold control and duplicate them like this, right? Now what we can do is we can create a new animation value and send that to both of these mergers over here. So now essentially we're creating one that changes the X animation and another one which is going to change the Y modulation, but it's doing nothing yet because what we need to do is we need to send these modulators to these values over here in the inspector. So I believe the way we set it up is that the top one was Y and this one was X. And so if we drag this down over here again, now we should have the ability to change animation X and animation Y independently. So now we have these two channels. Let's just call this animation X, animation Y. Uh, now we have these two channels which are basically generating that new sequence. So now to get these channels to punch out different values, all we need to do is simply just select this entire uh, stack of mergers and control drag. And it keeps everything intact over here in terms of the note planes going to the correct places. And then the only difference that we need, you can see here these red and blue uh, tie lines over here. We just need to change those for, the, for these ones. So this one will go over here and this one will go over here. So now we've created those two channels which are sending the different values depending on their different animations like this. But those notes are always gonna be the same. Now what we can do is we can look at how we would create different MIDI channels. So over here, what we can do is we can put in, if the constant is zero, then it's MIDI channel one, one is MIDI channel two, two is three, et cetera, et cetera. So we can do it that way. Or what we can do is we can just create another output like this and then we can send so in this instance i actually had it going through a pitch quantize so what we can do is we can duplicate this send this through here and i had it going through an add so we can duplicate this and instead of sending from this pitch quantize we send from this one and this one we can send to this output and assign this to midi channel two so now we have those independent midi channels uh, why is this velocity coming through? We don't need that for now. So now we have these independent MIDI channels and we can actually create a new trigger probabilities for each one as well. So in this instance, uh, you can probably see I'm using trigger probabilities to generate the things, the triggers, but there's various ways you can do it. It's up to you. The main thing here is the pitch and values. Okay, what we're gonna wanna do is actually make sure that all of these sequences, steps modules are actually set to mute when stopped because we don't wanna be generating any movement when we don't need to. All of the triggers modules as well and the probabilities are muted. Okay, cool. So now quickly we can explain how we would split these channels up uh, in terms of their MIDI data. So here, what we would do is we would use the channel filter device and we can just disable the channels which we don't want. So then we can put this into a group, duplicate it, and then set this to channel two. So now we have two channels of Vital. I'm just gonna jump in here and choose a preset for each one. Oh, my God. 
Okay, so let's talk about how we would derive values for the third channel. So let's add another channel over here. And let's just add another label over here and it's called the Z. So like I said, the position of the X and Y on the Z plane is determined by the values on X and Y's planes. <laughs> so it can be a little bit confusing, but um, one thing to note is just basically we're sending this into this to control the movement and the same with this one. So essentially what we're gonna be, wanna be doing is using the modulator. Let's just make two of these for now. And let's just set these over here. We're gonna have to do a little bit of mathematics involved, but just for now, let's quickly assign this to the X and this one to the Y. So now notice that there's either too little or way too much movement happening over here. And we can quickly check out what's happening by using the uh, value readout uh, module over here and just having a look at uh, what's happening over here. So if we look at these semitones, we'll notice that it's going from like uh, a couple of octaves worth of values up and down. And that is determined, or, or what happens then is it basically scales that into values of minus one to plus one, I believe. And minus one and plus one, I believe. And so like here, if we set this like this, you'll see that it's, it's now a little bit more representative, but there's not enough range. So in, in fact, it's not actually minus one to plus one. We're, we're only dealing with like minus 0 0.25 to minus to plus 0 0.25. So what we could do is we could use some maths to scale that up. So what we're gonna need is a multiply and we're going to need an add just to get it into the positive domain. So over here, let's say, send from this into an add. No, no, we wanna multiply first and then we can add. And then let's add some constant values over here. So first, I believe we wanna multiply by maybe about four. I think that's too much, let's say two. And then what we wanna do is we want to add one. And that basically just forces it into the positive domain. In fact, we could say 0 0.5. We could also use the value scalar system here again to constrain these values instead of doing this maths. If you wanna just you know, use percentages instead, that might be a little bit easier. But in fact, we do actually need to just scale it up first. So let's say multiply by four and then a constant value, uh, then a value scalar. And finally, what we can do is we can use this value quantize. And what this does is it basically forces this value into uh, multiples of whatever the constant that you send into the blue is. So let's say, for example, if we send a constant of 0 0.25, it's gonna force it onto values, like multiples of 0 0.25. So let's just value scale it a bit so it's only above the zero. Cool, that looks about right. And so once we've built this system, all we need to do is just duplicate it and replace it with the other axis. And so now the Z axis is determined by the value of the X and Y. Pretty interesting. And now all we need to do is we need to duplicate this system which we've created for the mergers and the output over here. So firstly, let's create a new output set this to MIDI channel three, and then let's duplicate all of these like this, and then send these red and blue from the third channel. Then I believe we are done. I believe we are done. Just some testing involved, and that should be it.
Okay, so here I've added the a third channel of Vital with some effects and stuff. And yeah, I want to talk about a little bit of housekeeping stuff and a little bit of stuff we can do to just make the patch a little bit more playable. So a couple of things I like to do is to put in some scalars for each of the trigger probability devices. And this is going to allow us to change the rate of the triggers of each channel. So we could, for example, slow down uh, some of the channels by just changing these values over here. Uh, so by default, we actually just want to set this to one, uh, one, uh, just so that there is no scaling happening by default. And then we can scale it up to change the speed if we want. Another thing that you could potentially do, um, you may or may not want to do this, depending on how the patch plays out in the long run, but use a sample and hold on each of the channel's pitches and send the trigger data to that. And what that's going to do is it's going to lock the pitch until the next note comes in. So with devices like uh, with MPE stuff, uh, this might be more apparent, like it might shift the pitch and do all sorts of weird things which you might not want. So you might just want to sample and hold it like this. Um, and that's going to lock the pitch until the next trigger is actually generated uh, per channel. So like I said here, what we can do is we can change to make like one of them faster than the other. And this is cool because this is going to allow us to create these like polyrhythmic type things now. So you don't actually need those pitch quantize modules because we're doing it with uh, pitches and not raw values. It's always going to be relevant to a particular pitch, but sometimes it might shift in and out depending on whether you're using the sample and hold or not. So again, that's a setup thing, but that's about it. What we could also do is maybe jump in here and start to identify these duplicates just to make things a little bit easier. What we can do is we can also set up some macros over here just so we can play it from outside of the patch. Thank <laughs> you. 
And because we use those add modules, like I explained in the previous video, we can just send it any note, like for example, let's just send it like an F, and it'll transpose this entire thing into the key of F. Awesome. That's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm going to be uploading this preset to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters. So if you want to know what that's all about, check out the link in the description. Yeah, thanks for watching. If you like my videos and you want to check more of them, then hit the subscribe button and don't forget that like button. Yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.